Hey kids, welcome to a lesson 3.2 if statements and control flow. Kids, if you took AP CSP with me or our programming class, you use Scratch, so you've seen these statements before. If statements are found in all programming languages, a way to make choices. Here's a comparison of if it's an app inventor block, AP CSP, and a pseudocode and Java ifs. You look over here, this is the App Inventor program. This uh, I think is AP CSP Mobile, if I'm correct. Here we got the one from code.org or your AP CSP test. You did it in text base. And this is what it's gonna look like when we do it here. The statement in Java main method normally run or execute one at a time in the order they are found from top to bottom. If statements, also called conditionals or selection, change the flow of control through the program so that some code is only run when something is true. If an if statement, if the condition is true, then the next statement or the or a block of statements will execute. If the condition is true, then the next statement or block of statements will execute. If the condition is false, then the next statement or block of statements is skipped. Here's just a little picture about that, kids. Here's our condition. Let's say we're running a timer. If time equals zero, then we are going to get out of it. If not, we're going to continue the next statement. So it could be just to subtract one second. Does it read that criteria? Nope. Then go down here. Does it meet that criteria? Yes. Then you go to this block. A conditional uses the keyword if followed by the Boolean expression inside of an open parentheses and a closed parentheses, and then followed by a single statement or block of statements. The single statement or block of statements are only executed if the condition is true. The open curly brace and the closed curly brace are used to group a block of statements together. It is recommended to always put the curly braces in even if you just have one statement under the if statement. The questions you will see on the AP exam will use curly braces. We just have a little of example of it down here this is a single statement. If this is right here and they're just saying, Hey, make sure you put this in some brackets. If you do it, technically you can get away with it if it's just a single line, but you always want some brackets in there, kids. Note, there is no semicolon at the end of a Boolean expression in an if statement, even if it's at the end of the line. The semicolon goes at the end of the whole entire statement, often on the next line, or curly brackets are used to mark the beginning and end of the block of code under the if condition. Up here, we can just see that again. Just note, no semicolons there, kids. I know it's weird. We'll get through it together. Imagine that your cell phone wanted to remind you that you need to take your umbrella if it was currently raining in your area when it detected that you were leaving the house. Kids, there's already apps like this, so we're going to learn a little bit how they work. This type of thing is going to become even more common in the future. It is an area of research called human computer interaction. You should remember that from code.org kids or ubiquitous computing. Computers are everywhere. The variable is raining is a Boolean variable that is either true or false. If it is true, then a message take an umbrella will be printed and then the execution will continue with the next statement, which will print drive carefully or run the code below to see how it works. So let's hit save and run. And here we go. If it's true, then we are going to print this and this. If it was false, well then kids, it would probably only print drive carefully because if we go up to here, the condition, is it raining? Well, if it's not, it's going to bypass our statement. If it is raining, it's going to say, take an umbrella. So that's what I think. I bet you have a question asking that right here. Try changing the code above to a Boolean is raining equals false. What will it print? Well, kids, I think it's going to print drive carefully. And there you go. We'll just copy that and paste it in. Check us and we are right kids. A good job. Again, we're just bypassing that part and going over. 
Relational operators and if statements. Most if statements have a Boolean condition that uses a relational operator like the equal equal, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than, or less than, equal to, as we saw in the last lesson. Run the following active code a couple of times until you see all of the possible outputs. It prints out whether a random number is positive or equal to zero. Then we have to add another statement to test to see if they are a negative number. Let's go ahead and run it. The number is negative five. Let's run it again. Negative two is the number. Hmm. Wonder how that's working. Let's take a look at it. Well, our old random number generator here, kids. Remember our lower range, our lower range is going to be negative 10. And then we are going to add 21 to 10. Well, kids, that should give us a range from negative 10 to 10, just like that goes up there. Well, kids, here's our if statement. If the number is greater than zero, we're gonna get system.outprint. The number is a positive. If it is equal to zero, it should say, it is zero. And then we have to add another statement here, kids. Is it negative? So we have to add that there. I think I can copy and paste a little of this to work off of. In fact, let's actually copy this one because we need to switch all this one around. This has to be, is it a negative number? And kids, we need to switch this around because we need to know, is that number less than zero? So if the number is less than zero, well, then it should be a negative number. So we have three if conditions here. If it is greater than zero, it's positive. If it is at zero, it is zero. And if it is less than zero, it is negative. Let's go ahead and print that out. The number is negative two, negative two is a negative. So we got the printout here of the number and then whatever the if statement that was correct, this time it was negative, it printed that one out. Let's try that again. So our number is four. The condition here is four is greater than zero. So it printed out this statement here. Let's do one more. Let's try to get zero kids. Chances of it happening. Oh, kids, hold on. I'm about to go play the lotto. Here we have our if statement. The number is zero. Zero is the number. So it meets that condition. It prints that one out. Kids, that was amazing. Note a common mistake in if statements is using equal instead of equal equal in the condition by mistake. Remember from last lesson, kids, one equal is just setting those variables equal to each other, equal, equal is comparing to see if they're equal to each other. So just remember that super common mistake. Consider the following code segment. What is printed as a result of executing the code here? We have an integer x is equal to three. If three is greater than two, we're going to go ahead and do x equals x times two. Is a three greater than two kids? It is. So three times two is six, so x equals six. If x, now remember kids, x is now six greater than four, we're gonna set x equal to zero, then we're gonna print out what x is. Well, we're just setting it to zero right here, so the answer has to be c, zero. Common errors with if statements. Here are some rules to follow with if statements to so avoid some common errors. Always use curly brackets to enclose the block statements under the if condition. Java does not care if you intend to use the code. It only goes by the brackets. Don't put a semicolon after the first line of the if statement. If whatever it is, don't do that. The if statement is a multi-line block of code that starts with the if condition and then the body of the statement. So remember that. Semicolons are like periods. We don't want to stop the condition. Always use equal, equal, not equal in the condition of an if statement to test a variable. One assigns it, two tests it, kids. The code below doesn't work as expected. 
Fix it to only print wear a coat and wear glove when is cold is true. Let's look at our code here. We have our Boolean is cold. That's equal to false. If is cold equals true, then we're going to set the system print out to wear a coat, wear gloves. So we have to print this out. Well, let's think about this, kids. The one thing I don't see here are my little curly Q friends. Everything else looks pretty good. So I'm pretty sure, well, let's put some curly brackets there and see if that fixes the code. We need one to enter the statement or one to close the statement. Let's hit save and run and see if that fixed our errors. Well, we kind of got it. So what next part do we got to do here to fix that? Because we want it to be false. Well, I think if just is cold, because we already have Boolean is cold is set. So I think if we just take the variable, if is cold, because that's the variable right here, equals false, which it does, if is cold is going to print out. I think we need some brackets around here though, kids. Remember how we write stuff. Let's hit save and run. There you go. So now when it's false, this is printing out. So that's all that is showing there. If it's false, well it is, then we're printing it out. Programming challenge, the magic eight ball. Kids, well, this is gonna be fun. Have you ever seen the magic eight ball? You ask it a yes, no question, and then shake it to get a random response. Signs point to yes, very doubtful, blah, blah, blah. If you've never seen it, there's a video here for you to watch, kids. But do not worry, I have a magic eight ball sitting right here, and I'm gonna use it to help us code it out. So let's go ahead and look at our code. First thing we need to do is we need to make a random number. We have to create a random number generator. And kids, we've done this a bunch of times. Int, and we can call this just number equals our integer. And we want to use our math, whoop, don't forget your uppercase, math random. And we want a number from one to eight. So eight being our high range. And we want to go plus one because we want that eight in there and we want one to be the low range. Whoops, like that. That should be our generator. Let's go ahead and do some printing here. Just to test, kids, you're gonna learn real quick. I like to test a lot. And let's just print out our number right here like that. And let's see what happens. We got a random number. Let's just make sure we're gonna to go to two, four. All right, so our random number is going. So we have a number popping up. Now all we have to do is to test for that number. I'm gonna comment this out. Might use this in a bit. Who knows, kids? Let's start with our first number, number one, right? And all we're gonna do, kids, is just simple if statements. If what? Well, our number, our number is equal to, and remember we need two because we're looking to compare it to. Kids, I'll find a parenthesis eventually. We have our one. Remember, we are not putting any semicolons in here. We're just going to print out system.out.println signs point to yes. just like that Whoop, there we are all right kids we got one done guess what we got to do if number equal equal and i'm going to copy this kids because we're going to use this a bunch equals two what are we going to print out well the second one is very likely kids can you hear my magic eight ball? Shh, listen. So 
two is now going to be like that. If the number is three, well, the number is three, we're gonna print out here. Let's go ahead and give us some space. Three is not gonna print out very likely, kids. Three is gonna print out, you guessed it, not at this time. I'm gonna copy this block here now, since we got a bunch more to do. Four, four is gonna equal reply, hazy, try again. Do you remember these kids? And you can really put whatever you want in as long as it's clean, my little friends. And our next one here, just make sure it all looks even. We have five. If I shake it up, this is the sad one, kids. Outlook, not good. We should put a little sad face, but we're not going to do that. Three more to go here, kids. So we have to do a random number six. We're going to do a little more positive now. You may rely on it. And then, kids, one more to go. Oh, two more to go. We have to do seven. My random number in my head is not working. Seven is cannot predict now. That's a sad one. And then eight, the awful eight. Well, that one's going to be my reply is no. Ooh, so scary, kids. We do have to go fix our random number generator up here. Remember, we changed it earlier. So we have to do uh, times eight and then plus one for our range eight of one. And then if the number is this, it's going to print out this. If it prints this one, then this one. If it's three, it's this one. Four, this one. Five, this one. Six, this one. Seven, that one. Eight, that one. Woo! We don't need our system dot out print number because it's going to tell us what is. Well, let's go ahead and check our stuff, kids. It's always good to check. So let's just print out our number with it. Print our number at the top, though, because it really does us no good when it gets buried at the bottom. So let's go up to the top here. And uh, let's do uh, right here a printout there of our number to see what happens. Let's hit save and run. Five, outlook is not so good. We go here, outlook is not so good. Save and run again. Eight, the dreaded my reply is no. So it's looking pretty good, kids. We could comment out this one if we really want. Now that we know it's working, kind of just takes up a little eye space there. Not at this time. So it's all going down there. Kids, you're going to work on this on Replit and you're going to add some more things to it and you're going to make it a little fancier. I have a separate rubric that's going to be on Google Classroom and we'll talk about that in class, my little friends. We got our summary here, kids. If statements test a Boolean expression and if if is true, go on to execute the following statements or blocks of statements surrounded by curly brackets. And kids, we just learned about this. If it's a single one, nothing. If we have a bunch of them, then we put them inside the curly bracket. So just remember that single line, none, bunch of lines, or we're going to put them in curly brackets. Relational operators equal, equal, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than, less than, equal to, are used in Boolean expressions to compare values and arithmetic expressions. Conditional if. Statements affect the flow of the control by executing different statements based on the value of a Boolean expression. And there you go, kids. That's our introduction into if statements. Not too bad. Hopefully this helped you out a little to get through your lesson. As always, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, kids, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later.